Hey y'all, let's talk about how C Sharp does memory management and how does it affect our code. We'll explore the two stores for our variables, the stack and the heap. We'll learn the differences between reference types and value types in context of memory management. But also, we'll see how variable types may change its behavior in code with some real life examples. I also want to explore the keywords ref in and out to see how they help us manipulate memory management while our program is running as well. So with that, let's jump into the video. So your c -sharp program, while it's running, it divides the memory that it has into two types, a stack and a heap. Although there might be multiple heaps while your program is running, uh, it doesn't matter for the purposes of this video, let's just talk about those as singular types of memory. So we have the stack and the heap. The stack is tasked with dealing with the smaller value types, uh, value me types meaning that they are copied by their value because we know that they are small in size and we also know their size so it is perfect for being, uh, for handling ints, booleans, structs, doubles, longs and all those smaller amounts of memory that it, it are assigned to variables as well as pointers as you can see on this uh, little graph here while the heap is much bigger and it also holds those bigger types, the reference types, which are uh, uh, referenced by their uh, address in the stack, but the actual values that they store are stored in the heap. So as you can see, my book has a couple of strings and an int variable as well, but it is stored on the heap because it's a part of the object. Those objects can grow and be smaller in size as the program is running, so the heap is much less organized. Therefore, deleting from the heap is costlier because it has to reorganize the space that it has to make full use of it. That's why heap is uh, slower to read and delete from. We have two types of variables in C-sharp. Value types, which are stored in the stack and are copied by the value, and also reference types, which are stored on the heap with pointers on the stack that are pointing to the heap memory address that they are uh, located under. And this not only affects the memory, but it also affects how we write our code. What does it mean in practice? So let's see this example here. We have uh, our int variable of page count one, and uh, we assign our page count two the value of page count one and then we change our page count one. So should our page count two be affected by it? Well, no, because ints are value types and they are copied. So this here means that the page count two is just a copy of page count one. It does not hold any reference or any sort of connection to page count one. It is just getting the value that page count one has, copies it and then it's forgetting about the existence of page count one and we'll explore if our assumptions are correct. But let's first go over the reference type example where we have our book creation. So we create a book with page count uh, 333 and then we have our second variable that we assign the book one value. So now our book, uh, book two is connected to our book one. It is a copy of the pointers. So even though these are two separate variables, they are two separate pointers, they are pointing to the same uh, place in memory in the heap. So when we change our page count to four, 444, the book two should be affected by it because when we are logging it out, it will go in the same place of the book one in memory. So let's see if our assumptions are correct. And as you can see, we log out our page count. It is a 66 value, so it is changed, but our page count two is not changed. Uh, as we expected and the same is for reference types as you can see both books have their page count changed. So this is a super simple example of the value types versus reference types. Let's also see how those value types and reference types affect our code when it comes to methods. So when we pass into our method that is processing a book, uh, a type of book that is a reference type, uh, we'll see that it copies the reference type, but anything that happens under our process book method will change the actual variable book that is uh, created before we jump into the method. As opposed to our value type example, where when we have our page count and uh, pass it into our process book, whatever we do with the page count here in the process book method will not affect what comes out of our uh, method and the variables that were instantiated before. 
So let's also explore that example. So I have altered a little bit our code here and now I have introduced two new methods, process page count and process book, where we each take in a variable. Uh, so we, once we take in our value type, which is an int of page count, and once we take our reference type, which is a book uh, that is a class. And let's see how it behaves now. As you can see, we create a page count of 11. We process it and set it to 90, 999. But once we go in, go out of it, the page count is still 11 because whatever we did in the process of uh, uh, processing of page count, which is a method, we had uh, our variable copied here and it won't be affected once we go out of it. But in the example of our reference type, even though we copied, we copied only the pointer to the book, which also is pointing to the same type of memory, the same place in memory where our book uh, was instantiated and our page count change was affected once we got out of this method. What happens when you want to actually alter our value type in a scope of another method? Well, then the reference keyword uh, comes into play, the ref keyword, which allows us to say to the compiler, hey, do not copy this value, just pass in the reference, I know what I'm doing. And let's see how it looks like in the example. So as you can see, uh, I've modified this code we are now taking the reference of int and as you can see when we are calling such method we have to tell to the compiler that we are aware of it and also specify it once we are calling it but as you can see our page count was affected uh, and is now set to 999 using the keyword ref allows us to take in our value types and treat them like reference types but how does ref interact with reference type which are already referenced. So this keyword should not be applicable to them? Well, no, as I've already shown you, uh, the references are still being copied. So uh, if we want to, in uh, the process book method, set our variable that is instantiated before uh, we go into the method to null, we cannot do that because as you can see, we would only set this to null. And once we go out of the method, our variable that we previously instantiated will still be pointing to the proper book. So with the reference keyword, we're telling the compiler, hey, do not create a copy of the pointer. We know what we're doing. We want you to pass in the pointer directly. And then we can null the reference type that is uh, inside the method change. So let's see that in the example. Okay, so when we change our uh, method to accept the reference of book, nothing will change on the surface. We still can change the property page count and it will be reflected in the book that was instantiated before. But if we remove it and set our book here to null, it will compile just fine and it will allow us to get the page count of the book that was created before we went into the method. But when we uh, apply the ref keyword here and here, as you can see, we will throw an exception. Yep, because now once we got out, the book one uh, was still the reference uh, in the method as well as outside of the method and it was null, so the page count cannot be retrieved. So this is the difference. Apart from ref, we can also decorate our parameters by the out keyword, which basically tells the compiler, do the same thing as the ref, but you want to make sure that we instantiate the variable that is uh, then retrieved by the out keyword here because this is uh, reserved for scenarios where we want to return something from the method as the argument so uh, we have to be sure that we are instantiating whatever we are returning to the caller so the ref and out behave the same conceptually but out just makes sure that the variable that is provided will be instantiated because you could for example just create here a new variable that will store whatever you return of the process book method but uh, you want to be sure that it will be assigned some kind of value uh, once your process book is completed as opposed to the uh, ref keyword which just tells the pro program hey whatever i'm just giving to you just no need to copy, take the reference directly. So those two behave the same 
uh, when it turns to uh, how they are dealing with the pointers and the value copying but uh, out is a more specific scenario where we uh, want just to return something from the method and we know that we'll be doing something after we completed our method with the variable returned. And with that, I think that this is the end of the basics that we can provide here. Uh, I also want to focus on structs and I hope to do that in the next video. So we'll see why there are uh, constructorless uh, structures, why uh, it is highly advised to have them as read-only because there are some quirks when it comes to them and they are also uh, very important when it comes to stack versus heap and uh, but I couldn't just fit it all into this one video so I hope that this gives you a small sample of how it all works and I hope to see you in the new video see you